Hey everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be trying out this marker kit by Crayola. I do a lot of art with markers, so I figured it'd be fitting for me to try a marker kit. This is something that's made for kids to do, but I figured it'd be fun to try it out. I don't know. <laughs> They're markers. I can't say no to markers. <laughs> so this is called the Mini Neon Marker Maker. Create 36 markers with clip caps. Here it shows some ink bottles and the combinations you need to make those colors. There's this clip thing, which maybe snaps the marker pieces together. I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, and this says actual size. So they are very mini. Oh yeah, here's a better look at some of the stuff. Mix it, dip it, click it, clip it, pop it, twist it, pull it. <laughs> Three bottles of scented ink. Oh, it's scented, oh. Snapping tool, colorable sticker sheet, carabiner caps, measuring tube. Slicing this open with some tape because why not? Oh, oh. Okay, looks like that's it. So if this shows how to make 18 different colors, but we have 36 marker barrels, we have a lot of extra ones. I mean, I could make some brownish colors by mixing all three colors, because they did not do that. Or I could try filling some of the markers up with my Copic ink. Hmm. <laughs> Mini Copics for on the go. <laughs> so many pieces. I'm actually really excited for this. I'm gonna build a marker. <laughs> Well, more than one. Carefully squeeze a total of 20 drops to the fill line. Push a core into a plug. Holding plug, slowly slide core into mini measuring tube. Let core absorb all the ink. So if I'm doing a straight up color, do I need to use the mixing tube? Can I just drip it onto the core? One, two. <laughs> okay, there are my 20 drops. Ooh, yeah, that gets hard to push, okay. Place nib and barrel tip down into mini snapping tool. Holding the plug, insert the core into the open end of the barrel. Place top of mini snapping tool on plug and press down. Place clip cap on marker and you're ready to wear and share. You can see the ink slowly creeping into the nib. Look at that, it's a BB marker. This is actually really fun. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing with the yellow and magenta just to get pure colors by dripping directly onto the core, but then once I start mixing, I'll use the little mixer. So now we gotta use this little mixer here. I feel like this is about to take a little extra time because we're gonna have to rinse this out every time. I mean, I could probably get away with going down the list without having to clean it out. So let's start with this one, I guess. 18 blue drops and two yellow drops. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 18. One, two, will it mix on its own? Slurp, slurp, slurp. Mm. Okay, it absorbed it all, although the outside looks a little wet. So I'm thinking I can maybe wipe off the outside. It's probably not really necessary. It's probably just gonna get messy. That down, and then this, and crunch it. Yeah, yeah. You can see this end looks more green than this end. I think I should use a toothpick to stir this going forward. All right, I've made every shade that was included in the chart and now I'm gonna make my own custom color using these three. I'm only gonna make one or two though because I wanna save some of the barrels for Copic ink. I want to make some kind of brownish color so I'm gonna use the same color combo I used here but add in a drop of blue. So it's the one that said 13 yellow, seven magenta. I'm actually gonna do six magenta, then one blue. One, two, three. 
Oh, making a mess. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, it still looks like a bunch of separate colors. <laughs> stir, 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 stir. Oh yeah, that's brown. Now I have poo stains on my paper. I wanna see if I can make a slightly lighter brown by mixing up this color here, the 19 yellow, one magenta, but I'll do 18, one, and one. I feel like a mad scientist. Oh, did that get another half drop in there? It might have. I think most of it went on the side. Well, we'll see what that looks like and I can try to adjust it accordingly. Oh, this looks greenish, <laughs> which makes sense since it was mostly yellow and then we added a bit of blue. Ooh, that's not what I was going for, but I do really like that. It's a color we don't yet have. I'm using some watercolor paper since these are water-based markers. That is my custom brown that I made. This is a pure magenta. And then working our way through the mixes. It's definitely a lot lighter than what it looks like, which I guess is why the labels are important. Oh, that is very neon. Wow, those look pretty similar. Did I accidentally mix the same one twice? <laughs> Those ones again look super similar. I suppose a lot of them did look similar on the chart too. Like, look at these. I'm realizing now I should have swatched on these as well. I can go back and try it. Hopefully it doesn't smudge. It's a, it's a Sharpie, so I think it'll be okay. Oh, that's BG. Eh. E1. That way it's easier to see what the color actually is. Guess I don't really need the number codes then. <laughs> Looks a little different on this paper though. A little bit darker. That's why it's important when you're swatching colors to swatch on the paper you're gonna be using. Then stick the labels on. I'm sticking them on the left-handed way so that they're not upside down for me. <laughs> Ta-da! As opposed to... <laughs> Perfect! Look at that! So I've selected which Gobit colors I want to put into my markers. These are the ones I chose. I had to pick ones that I had refills of, but thankfully I have refills for most of my favorite colors. There are 16 colors in total. Actually, 20 drops seems to be about the same. Ta-da! A BB Copic marker. Wait, 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 no, no, no. No, I'm not done yet. Where are the scissors? Ah. It's done. Instead of cleaning this little thing out every time, I'm just gonna dip the ink directly like I did with the first colors because then I don't have to clean that thing out every time. We know the amount now. I need about 20 to 21 drops. I have four colors left to put in the markers, but I only have three barrels left. But I have four of every other piece. So where is the fourth barrel? <gasps> Did they just include one too few, or did I lose it? So I have to cut one of these colors, one of these final four. I think I'll cut this one. Okay, my little creations are done. Look at them now, they're little baby workers. Ah, I don't know, this is just so satisfying. Many things are fun, most of the time. This is one of the Copic ones. Oh my god, it's a mini Copic! <laughs> so now I'm gonna make a drawing with my new markers. So first I sketched out some ideas of what I would be coloring in because I need some kind of drawing to color in. And looking at the color selection of these Crayola markers, it just brought me back to my childhood coloring with Crayola markers. There are a lot of very bright colors. There's not a lot of super pale ones or super dark ones. It's just very vibrant mid-tones and so 
I thought I would draw something that had a childlike feel to it. I mean, a lot of my art does. I draw very cartoony stuff, very cutesy stuff, but I, I thought of these little creatures and I thought maybe one could be a cupcake. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't end up going with that idea. I was also doing little thumbnails for their little habitat. I thought maybe they live in the sky amongst the clouds and there would be one big mother version of the creature and then little baby ones. I don't know. I was playing around with different ideas and then I thought I wanted to include some kind of human character in there. That's what I do. I draw a lot of human characters. <laughs> and I drew a little girl with pigtails and bows in her hair. It's giving me flashbacks to my earlier YouTube days. I feel like that was my jam was drawing like the pigtails, bows, all that stuff. I mean, you still see that stuff in my art, but this was just giving me old school Bailey vibes, especially with the way I did the line art for the hair, which you will see in a moment. So then I sketched it larger, and this is still on watercolor paper because these are water-based markers. It makes sense to use a watercolor paper because it can handle the water. If I use Crayola markers or other water-based markers on my usual cardstock, it tends to rip up the surface of the paper a little bit. It just, it chews through the paper, but this paper is designed to handle water, so it works out. And to outline it, I used my Copic Multiliners. So then I went in and started coloring with these little BB markers, and they were pretty fun to use. What's interesting is that some parts you can actually see the texture of the paper showing through. Like, look at her colored ponytail at the very top of it. You can see some of the paper texture showing through, which is very interesting. I was trying to leave a lot of highlights behind because like I said, a lot of these are mid-tones, so I don't really have much to shade with. So I was trying to take advantage of the white of the paper and leave a lot of highlights behind. You can see in the eyes, I did cross hatching when I did the line art, and that was to darken them up because I knew I wouldn't have a color that's super dark. And I wanted her eyes to be on the dark side. The dark side. So then I got started on this skin, which did not go as planned because I made that brown to be the skin color, but I didn't have anything to shade it with. So I thought, well, what if the color straight out of the out of the marker is the shadow color and then I can add water to it to make it lighter because these are water based markers. It's kind of like using a watercolor marker. It's the same idea. <laughs> but boy, do you see how yellow it's turning? Here's my test here. So if you take the yellow ink and add water to it, it goes so neon. I was shook. Look how neon that goes when you add water to it. It's brighter than it is when it's fresh out of the barrel. And so when I was trying to add water to the skin, it just made her skin super yellow. And you can see some patches that turned more red too, like pinky around her eyes and around her eyebrows and stuff. It was like the colors were separating when I added water to it. And so it was looking a mess. I tried adding more pinkish color in there in the shadows. And ultimately, I think I did an okay job at salvaging it. You know, these are Crayola markers, <laughs> but it does have a weird texture. It looks like I used crayons or something. So that's interesting. <laughs> The main problem here though, is that her skin is such a warm tone and her hair is not such a warm tone. So I did end up adding the pink in the hair just to match the warmer tones in the skin. And I added some yellow again to make her skin tone look like it matched the overall color scheme of the whole thing. So this turned out very rainbow because I was using lots of colors everywhere. There's blue, yellow, and red in her hair and in the skin. You can see more of that neon coming out as I shade the little mascot character. <laughs> For the background, I did splotches of blue and then watered them down just so it wasn't solid color blue and it was something a bit light so it wouldn't blend in too much with her hair. So that's what it looked like and I thought that was going to be the end of the video because I didn't want to use the mini Copics. I, they didn't come in the kit. That was something I just kind of made myself. Like the barrels came in the kit, but not the ink. So I thought, why not include it in the video? I printed off a smaller version of it because thankfully I scanned the line art before coloring <laughs> just in case. And so I'm recoloring it here with the mini Copics. And since I had different colors to choose from, I went with a different color scheme. So the skin's lighter, the hair is brown instead of the blue colors, and so on and so forth. You'll see. Initially, I printed off this mini version on some of the remaining watercolor paper because the other one I drew, I had cut the page 
and I used the remaining scrap piece, but then I ended up screwing up the skin, so I ended up printing it out again, but onto cardstock, which worked much better for the markers. One thing I noticed with these little Bebe Copics is that they run out of ink hella fast. The Crayola ones lasted much longer because I colored in that huge illustration and I didn't have to refill any of them. And with these ones, I did have to refill them quite a bit, like the base skin color, that E50, I had to refill that. Although I technically had colored the skin in twice because there were two versions of this, but with some of the other colors too that I only used in this one, I had to refill them. So I don't know if that's because the alcohol is evaporating, maybe there's not a tight seal, or is it because I didn't fill them enough compared to the Crayola ones? I don't know. All I know is that this kit was super fun to use. I know it's a kid's thing, but I was having so much fun building the markers and I just love markers so much. So I had a good time with this. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.